Hello there and welcome back to my well-worn art table. I am going to show you in this video several different techniques for building one painting and this is going to teach you how to build a more high level or upscale painting um, which as a beginner often I find and I did this too so I'm not you know criticizing I was there but I do find that a lot of times beginners want to sort of dump all the paint and everything on the canvas in one session and that does sort of make for a flat looking painting versus something that has various levels of depths and uh, nuances so I'm going to show you how to do that uh, with various techniques on one canvas for one painting so the first thing I'm going to start with is my handy dandy. This is a modeling paste that I'm using. You can use an extra heavy gel or anything that's going to help you build a nice texture. And I'm going to lay this down because I'm going to do a, a vertical format landscape of a sunrise painting. And I think I'm going to bring most of my horizon line up here but this is going to be sort of a water effect down here and I'm going to put just a little bit of texture in a line where I would like to keep my horizon. I'm not going to make this a heavily textured painting but I do want just a little bit of a delineation of of texture on here for both the horizon and for water. So this is just a prepped canvas board. I'm working on a 16 by 20 and uh, it's prepped with one coat of titanium white. When I say prepped that's generally what I mean. You can prep it with gesso as well. Just a coat of white gesso if you like. Uh, I always like to give my canvas one coat of at least one coat of titanium white, sometimes two, depending on the scope of the painting. So there's my horizon line, basically straight across. And then I'm going to take a little more on my palette knife, which is actually, <laughs> this is a cake decorating knife that I purchased. And I find, I really like palette knives, but I find this one is my go-to. It just seems to be the right size. It's very flat, has a large surface where a lot of palette knives are either way too small or way too large. So it's kind of just a little aside there, flat. and then scrape my knife to kind of, what I'm doing is actually removing a little, but I want to get sort of a, a ridge there. And that is going to have more or less the effect of water in my painting as we paint over it. I don't want it perfect. Water doesn't lay perfectly. So that is not what I'm going for. Don't aim for perfection with your paintings or you'll make yourself crazy, trust me. And you just scrape that palette knife along, basically just removing a little but leaving those ridges. So I'm right going to go there. ahead and finish this. That's my first technique that I'm sharing with you. I'm going to finish it, let it dry thoroughly before I come back and build any color on this. And I would say dry thoroughly at least overnight, if not a couple days. Depends on your climate. I live in a very warm climate, which by the way, that is the fan whirring in the background. Just in case you're wondering what that background noise is, it's summertime as I shoot this. And I do need a fan on because it's hot in my little studio here with the lights on and everything. So that's the first technique. Then we'll come back and build color. Okay, welcome back. In this uh, session, our texture has fully dried. 
So we are going to go ahead and put our ground color on. And when you hear artists refer to um, adding ground, it means that they're putting on a background color on their painting in which to build upon. So my background color is going to be sort of a, uh, a pinkish red, um, orangey color. And that's what I've got here in my cup. I am using a cadmium red drop of that, a drop of magenta, a drop of, this is a Naples yellow, and then of course I have my basic white. I'm going to take all of those, add some of my liquid glaze, my glazing medium. This is a satin. Adding that in. Fairly decent amount. I'm going to add some water with my Mr. Bottle. And I'm going to mist my canvas lightly. You can use any type of products you want. You can use any brand you want. But these are the type of products that I like to work with. I'm going to mix this up. And this is giving me kind of a milky pink, which is going to serve as my background that I'm going to build on. And that's the color we have. All right, so just applying this a little bit of a baby pink but it's going to give us a nice background that we can build some more intense and depth of color on I'm applying it to my entire painting just using a flat brush that had just a little water on it And I'm going to let this dry very well since we are working with glazes. This is imperative that it, you let it dry very well. Unless you're working in a blend session, which we are going to be doing that technique, in which you work with it wet, of course. But for this background color, I'm going to let it dry completely overnight. And then I'm going to I'm going to save this actually in a receive. This is a resealable tub. I'm going to save it and then I'm going to add more color to it tomorrow that's going to add more uh, richness and depth. We'll put that in. We're going to build it from the ground up, which is why that is called the ground layer. So let that dry and we'll come back. All right, then, welcome back. And this is dried. So, what I'm done and this is sort of another underlayer that I'm doing. Is some yellow. It's just light yellow. Use uh, just a light butter yellow. I used a Naples yellow and uh, some satin glaze on a mop brush or a blending brush. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just add a little bit of this in a few key key areas and do a real blend on this. And this is going to be down here as well. Okay. So because I'm adding this with my brush and it's wet, I'm not going to be able to do a real blend on this. I'm going to have to switch to a different brush. This is a good mop that I use, blender. Dry. Always grab a dry brush when you want to do a blending technique like this. Because if the brush is wet, it's just going to move the paint around. So once this brush gets wet, I'll have to grab another blender, which is why a blending technique really does require several brushes. But I really just want a, a light wash of color here. 
And so I'm going to go through and blend this in as much as possible. So I just have sort of a light hint of the yellow. I don't want a lot of bright glaring yellow right here. I just want a hint and it's perfectly fine if it's not even. This is going to be a sunrise photo and sunrises well, all kinds of colors all over. Now again blending you gotta work quickly. This is an under layer so it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. It doesn't matter if you know it's not exactly right because we're gonna be applying colors over it. So you can add just a little bit of water if you need to uh, reactivate it. I just put a little water on my brush just to reactivate the paint, thin it out a bit. But you don't want a lot of water. Just enough that you can manipulate it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this and then we will come back and add yet another layer when this has fully dried. Again, this is a yellow mixed with a little satin glaze and a little water with mop blending brushes. All right, what I'm going to do is show you how to add a small highlight area. I'm just using a little titanium white with a small palette knife and you'll see how this works as we move forward. But what I'm going to do is just kind of do a little circular pattern here. not too large and affect just a little bit of texture. Play with it a bit to get it just how I want it. And then as I come down here I'm going to bring that white as well on top of the yellow that we just laid down all the way down. Again this doesn't have to be perfect this is just sort of an under highlight that we're building here. So kind of smudging it with my palette knife as I move down. This again is my horizon line, so I'm working with it just underneath the horizon line. Pretty much a straight line even though it is a little smudged, but that's okay because that's what we want. All right, so that is going to dry fully and then we will come back and add more color.